Welcome to The Uncommon Truth. My name is Max, and I'm joined by Steve Orsillo, Senior Pastor of the Father's House Church. Hello. And today, in place of his wife, Vicki, we've got Steph Mumby, who's joined the podcast before. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hi. Uh, Vicki was feeling a little bit under the weather or under lots of grandchildren are around this week, and so... Uh, she's not feeling good, yeah. So we... Uh, lots of grandchildren, and she's not feeling good, but... Okay. She loves the grandchildren. She has, that's that's a highlight. We got to get her rested up so she can have the most most time possible with the grandkids, right? Yeah. Your son Anthony is in from Hawaii. He's way more of a burden than those <laughs> seven grandchildren are. We were thinking we were thinking of having uh, Anthony take Vicky's place, but we didn't know if the if the airwaves could contain him. <laughs> we weren't quite sure, so we yeah. brought Steph along. So thanks for joining us, Steph. Yeah. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm excited. It's, it's really good to have you. Um, before we before we get into what we're going to talk about, you brought us some some Halloween candy. So we're recording this before Halloween, but by the time everybody's listening to this, they are picking through their kids' candy and everything. So that's really good. Uh, what do we got? I like Twix. There are trying two to, Twix. Trying to punt it yeah. off. See, on Vicky, me. Vicky doesn't do chocolate, which I found out through the podcast. She doesn't even like chocolate. Not even no. chocolate chip cookies. And which um, is kind of no. criminal. Steve was going to. He said he wasn't going to partake, but I don't know. We won't. We. This is a he, full-on stumbling block. My problem here is the addiction and how often that stuff is around. So. It's just lying around yes. in wait all the time. Yeah, like Twinkies. I have to say no because I am helpless. Yeah. Okay. To well. <laughs> We bring Steph in, and she brings the stumbling blocks right away. First right thing. away, right first away. I'm, thing. I'm here to test your faith. Yeah. So, <laughs> so now <laughs> we know that. Now, Steph, you listen to pretty much every podcast, as many and, as I can. Yep. And so, what do we usually start off with? The first thing Steve and Vicky do on most well, podcasts. The most important thing to point out today is that I was here first, and I was on time. Uh-oh. Yes. And I am representing womankind That's by right. feeding mankind. <laughs> yes. And I was here last, but I still was on time. Oh, we, we, no, we checked. Know. You were not on time. <laughs> on my clock, I was. <laughs> That's right. You were using that one, huh? No, no. I was using Computer. apples. Yeah. Yes. That was, that <laughs> we were comparing apples to oranges there. So, right. And you were I, the orange. I worked hard. I watched the clock to make sure that, you know, That's very between good. me and Vicky, we were on time at least once. That is yeah. very good for you guys. Yeah. It's and about time. And so Steph is Steph is American Canadian. You are sure an American am. citizen now, and but you're you're from Canada, yep. right? Mm-hmm. So what are your feelings about poutine? Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> oh, I love poutine. Actually, I'm going to a restaurant on Sunday night, and I saw that there's poutine on the menu. I've never been there before. So guess what I'm having? Poutine. Oh, okay, there, Absolutely where, having poutine. Where around Orville has poutine on the menu? The Union. Oh, no way. I would, I would mm-hmm. expect nothing It's a new less. restaurant. I've never been there. We got, yeah. So we'll see We've now. We've got to try it. We tried to wait in line there for a while. It's like when new new things open in Oroville, everybody everybody swarmed it. We tried to go there on Saturday night, and it was packed, it was packed which is really oh. good to see in downtown Oroville because it's, yeah. it's a town kind of coming back from economic yeah. not they, greatness. They did such a good job building that, and what they they bought a different restaurant, and, and they – added that outdoor ambiance and mm-hmm. just the way they've laid it all out is so beautiful and then of course on top of that they've done a really good menu really good food hard to beat i'm looking forward to it especially the poutine but we all, we all know your we don't need to get into cheese curds and your view on poutine if you need to if you need <laughs> I'm, to, laying it, I'm laying it down <laughs> if you need to hear what steve thinks about poutine you can go back a few episodes just oh. cheese curd by itself oh it's in a few yeah. episodes, if I remember. It is. Yeah. It's a recurring theme. We can we can put it on our podcast uh, description. We talk about Jesus and poutine. No, those are the two most common. Those two in, aren't equal. In most things, I I try really hard to agree with Steve, but on that one, we're just we're never going to agree. Yeah. No. I really like it, but that's okay. At Maybe. least two of her children agree with me. That's Three, right. We're, we're they, actually the I third one is joining came, the camp. I I've only got one left. In the we, I got her kids <laughs> and me that hate cheese. On, on the you got them off the poutine wagon, huh? Well, they hate cheese, and just think about it for a minute. Just pause for a minute yeah. and think of the word cheese curd. Oh, I thought you were going to say something about poutine. <laughs> well, yeah, that's where he's going next. Cheese. I'm curd. losing my little 
microphone filter here. Well, maybe you don't need it. All right, we'll go without. Give it a shot. If you're watching on YouTube, then I'm done with I'm done with this thing. I'll try not to. It's uh, broken. That's what that's for. Oh, I was going to say, is it a, so, spit, a spit guard? No, it's what? not a spit guard. It's not a COVID guard. It's a pop filter. So I'll try not to pop my peas too much. <laughs> and uh, and we'll get into what we're, we're here to discuss. So I asked, this is something I'm, I'm working on in my, in my walk with Jesus. Something I've been, since I got here, I didn't know it was possible to ask the Lord a question and then just kind of hear an answer. I I mean, I guess I thought it was possible, but I'd never really seen it done. And so I was thinking about, usually my brain works on thinking what I should do and best courses of action and using wisdom. And so I was, I, I just had not a whole lot of time to think about podcasts this week. So I just said, Jesus, what do you want to talk about on the podcast? And and then what came to mind, it wasn't like an audible voice, but what came to mind was talking about disappointment. And, um, and I thought, okay, well, we talk a, a lot about, you know, what happens when the storm comes in life. And both of you guys have featured prominently in that, right? Because we all, you know, if you've listened to the podcast before, Steph and Jordy have been on the podcast. We've talked about that. And we've talked about what, it, what a great man Jordy was and how much we miss him. And we've talked about your granddaughter. And also, Jordy was your really good friend and associate pastor. And um, and your granddaughter, Ava Lynn, and your house, and mm-hmm. all this stuff, those are huge disappointments, right? We've, we've hit some of those before. Yeah. But there's also disappointments all over. Like, wherever we look, there's disappointments um, right. of just different degrees. Um, I was joking with you guys before we started. Like, some part of me is disappointed that I didn't have hair on top of my head by the time I reached 30, right. you know? And not not a huge disappointment, but, you know, there's... That's not what you draw a picture of yourself as a as a kid. dad, you know, right. when you're a kid. <laughs> but there's also disappointments like, oh, man, why did the Lord bring me to this place? Or how did my life become this way? Um, and I think there's just a lot of people that could relate to what do we do with the topic of disappointment when it comes about. So, um, and it's actually really apropos that Steph is here today and Vicky's not feeling well because I think you have a lot that you can can bring into the conversation. So I wanted to ask you guys, when when disappointment, whether big or small, kind of comes into someone's life and you, you run into something like that, how should we approach it? Um, is it even okay to feel disappointed? Um, or what do we do when we face disappointing circumstances? I think that uh, there's more than one way to face it, and there's more than one type of disappointment that has a different outcome. So I think that the vast majority of our, you know, like why, why, oh, why, Lord, me, why me, Lord, kind of stuff, uh, most of that comes out of a, a, a culture that doesn't let Jesus be Lord, doesn't let God design your life for you, but then designs a life and asks him, tries to, tries to invoke that you ask anything in my name, it'll be done for you. So we try to get him to go along with our plan more than us going along with his plan. Okay. So then there's the other side, the things that are abrupt, like your house burning down or your granddaughter or your daughter having leukemia or your husband dying. Yeah. And, you know, and of course, just any uh, abrupt thing that happens to a grandkid, like she got hit by a car and killed. That's like you had no plan. There's just like you were, you woke up that morning thinking everything is normal. But she got leukemia and fought for three years. I mean, you're struggling for three years to determine is, is this, are we really doing good by her to put all this radiation in her? Isn't the cure worse than the disease? Hmm. And isn't the suffering worse than death? And so you, you battle this all the way through. And the fact that she got leukemia, you battle through. And almost 100% of your struggle is, is, is it okay for him to be Lord and for your life to have the pitfalls and the blessings? Because, you know, if you claim plain about all the pitfalls, you gotta, you got to go ahead and reject the blessings too. Mm. And the, the, I'm talking about the ones that you can see, the ones that you go, whoa, the Lord really blessed me in this. Look, look how this could have been. Look where I could have ended up, but look where I'm at. And look how good it turned out where I'm at. 
And so you got to, you know, if you let him be Lord here, you have to let him be Lord over here too. And so there's this, this constant battle of disappointment. And, and I think we could clear an awful lot of the deck by really struggling out. Is, does he get to be the Lord of my life? I mean, it's probably been 100 years that Christianity has been struggling with lordship salvation. Before that, another 1,900 years, nobody struggled with lordship salvation. Everybody understood he has to be lord to be savior. But today, we, we've been struggling in Western culture, in modernized, modern religion, uh, whether or not he has to be the lord. Does he have to be in control of everything, and do we have to believe that he sets our footsteps mm. like did he plan for you to be bald or is that just a dna <laughs> accident that happened yeah. through the marriage of people 200 years ago mm-hmm. and then 190 years ago and then 170 you know people kept getting married every 20 years or so yeah. if i said that right and you're just the recipient of a dna cross mixture that caused the young men in your family or to have a high percentage of being bald and so when it happens, you know, I can imagine because, sure, you know, I plan to never need glasses. I mean, that was my plan. I declared yeah. it. I'll never need glasses. Turned 40 and I need glasses. I've been wearing glasses since I was 40 now, 24 years. And yeah, I know the struggle I had. Why me, Lord? You know, or why, why is my back hurt? Or, mm-hmm. you know, and get into way worse things like cancer, like death, like fire, things you have no control over, like the ocean. You know, you want to hold back the wave, but you got no chance. And so maybe you're better off saying, Lord, I, I accept your lordship, and I decided that you're good no matter what happens. And I think that's – I don't think we could criticize somebody for struggling through hardship, but in the end, what would be the best thing for them would be to accept his lordship, thank him, for the path that you're on mm-hmm. and ask him to help you get through the hardship. Help me, help me over these humps. Help me around these obstacles. Help me get through this pain. Yeah. Uh, help me love you through it. Help me not sin by doubting you. So I think that might be uh, the best foundational starting point. Of course, there's so much more we can talk about, mm-hmm. but that should be the foundational starting point of Lordship Salvation is Bad things happen to good people, and good things happen to bad people. And we just have to say, Jesus is Lord. This will all be sorted out in the end mm. and go from there. So, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I think one of the things that, you know, really creates disappointment is, you know, expectation, right? We sort of have this expectation, you know, that, that I'm going to be the one person on the planet that nothing bad happens to, right. you know. And um, when we are willing to let go of some of those expectations— you know, and that goes into the whole idea of lordship, right? Is my life belongs to you no matter what happens, you know, and that has been my stance for many, many years long before, you know, my husband got cancer or even some of the other disappointments. But, you know, once those dis- disappointments do happen, you know, I think as, as much as we acknowledge his lordship, and that is the most important part, you know, it is also as Christians and as humans important to acknowledge the pain that those disappointments cause or that, that, you know are caused by those disappointments and and it's really the releasing of that pain to our lord you know mm. we're and, and he really is the only one that can heal pain you know we can't heal our own pain our emotional pain our physical pain any of those kinds of pains and, and he is the only one so surrendering that pain to him rather than holding it close because when we hold it close you know then we start to protect ourselves from him um rather than you know, giving ourselves to him uh, yeah. when, you know, before we, we, before Jordy and I had our first uh, baby Jack, we had actually had a miscarriage before that. And I didn't realize it until years later, but I had never processed that pain. I'd never released it. And so what that ended up building up in me is this idea that you can't protect my kids. So I'm going to protect my kids. Mm. And, and this whole idea of not trusting him. And, and that really only came from not, first of all, acknowledging the disappointment. And second of all, not, you know, opening myself up to him with my pain and saying, you know, I don't understand, but I do know that the only one who can heal my pain is you. And you're still good. And you'll still protect me. And you're still going to protect my kids. And I submit myself 
to your lordship and I give myself and my children to you along with the disappointment because when we don't acknowledge those things what we do is we fall into self-pity mm. and self-pity is the enemy of every Christian because you know then we start to go into this whole entitlement thing you know we become very selfish and you know as Christians we're called to be the exact opposite of that yeah yeah I, it seems to me when I was thinking about this like we kind of fall into kind of two categories where where you can either have that entitlement like oh man this these situations shouldn't have happened to me like why is why me um, kind of shaking your fist a little bit but there's also the other the other group that I'm, I'm pretty I guess I'm pretty well aware of the group that think, oh, I'm just going to act like this isn't even a disappointment. I'm just going to push right through, Mm -hmm. right? You know, and kind of bottle that pain down. Mm -hmm. Um, Are there any other ways that Christians view disappointment or or is that is that kind of like it? I think that uh, the friends of Job, their their attitude that God did not like, um, I think that's still not only still alive and well, it's it's prevalent in today's world that if bad things happen to you, you must have done something wrong because mm. God is just and does not allow that. Yeah, God, you cannot say God did this to you, and I hear that all the time. And I, you know, now knowing some phenomenally good people like Steph here, like my daughter Nicole, like uh, me and my wife, who have had some bad things happen to us, and it's there's this. <laughs> I literally had a girl come up to me and say, maybe you're having all these bad things because you're not honest with money. And I'm I like, you have some evidence that I'm not honest with money? Well, no, just feel like that's what the Holy Spirit's telling me. And I'm, I'm thinking, wow. <laughs> wow, you know, to deliver that to a, someone you don't really know, you don't know anything bad about them, you don't know that they're bad with money. And yet you, you're saying that all these bad, maybe all these bad things are happening because you did something. Wow. That God is not allowed to let bad things happen to people who do right and do good most of their life or who make this statement. For me, when Ava Lynn was in her first near-death experience, it was really it was really going bad. And they really had to drill a hole in her head and relieve pressure, you know, to save her life. And they didn't know, they didn't think of that till later. But I was really struggling. Mm-hmm. I was trying so hard not to develop a bad attitude. And I got out of bed and just made this stand. I, I spread my feet apart, made this posture, almost like a rock band lead singer, you know, put my hand in the sky, yeah. towards the sky. <laughs> and I said, I have decided a long time ago that you're good. And there is no cancer. There is no disappointment. There is no turn in the tide that's going to make me think different that nothing has the right to steal my knowledge away from me, that you're good no matter what happens to me. Come hell or high water, you're good. And I know that I was literally set free. I left the house, came to a staff meeting, had the staff pray for us. I did not have a gift of faith. I I knew what I need is a download of faith from the Lord because I am reeling over this, Mm -hmm. this little girl, Went down to the hospital, had, I mean, it's too long a story to tell, but it was just miraculous faith, and I knew. And, it, and, and even though it wasn't a miraculous laying hands on miracle healing, a neurologist just said, hey, I have an idea. And she went in there, man, and saved Ava Lynn's life that day. Boom, it was all over. She was back on track, healing, you know, overcoming, mm-hmm. getting good tests, you know, going into remission. And that was her first time coming out of a near-death experience into remission and and we we got a whole bunch more time with her we got to borrow her a little bit longer um and some people would say it'd been better had she died that day because the next two and a half years were were pretty torturous medication Mm -hmm. pretty torturous regime in her life of misery you know and yet if you knew her then you 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 knew she was smiling laughing praising the lord's talking to jesus yeah. she was spicy as heck and, and, and there's wonderful. a lot of people that came to came through that story the next few years that she was alive came to jesus right? yes right yeah. and so 
uh, it's, you know, when you look at it, you doesn't God have a right to use my granddaughter and my life knowing the outcome, you know, really knowing the outcome of our faith, you know. Mm-hmm. When Jordy and Stephanie went through what they went through, there's not, there wasn't a guess of the outcome. God saw the outcome from the beginning. And none of us lost our faith over Ava Lynn. Ava Lynn didn't lose her place in heaven. She didn't lose her innocence. And in the overall picture of eternal perspective, really this was a really great event. But in my plans for my life, my preconceived notion of how blessings Those should expectations from my faithfulness yeah. and my generosity and my energy and my joy mm. i ought to have an outcome that is more blessed from my opinion than blessed from his opinion yeah. yeah and you get caught up in that and so you have to make these declarations and you have to say you have to remember what you believe you don't have to make anything up you just have to remember what it you believe and what is true. Mm-hmm. And I think that's pretty good. Yeah, no, I would I would just add to that, you know, and, and reiterate this exact same thing, which is just that, you know, if he's good, then he's good. Then he's good. And we don't, that doesn't change based on circumstance. Um, and we can't allow circumstance to determine who he is. And because of that, then, you know, our circumstances don't necessarily have to line up with what we think, but they have to line up with, He's good, and so then you have to filter your process through. He is good, and he gave us a will. You know, he yeah. gave us free will, and that free will allows us to say, I choose that he's good. It doesn't matter what my feelings say. It doesn't matter what my circumstances say. It doesn't matter what anything else on planet Earth says. If he's good, then he's good, and if I don't feel like that's true, then it's my job to work through those feelings until I do feel that he's good, or even if I don't feel that he's good, I can choose that he's good and allow him to walk me through the process of healing from that pain, because ultimately, you know, he doesn't change, and he also didn't promise us a life, you know, that that was going to be free from pain, And, and that is a huge uh, misnomer, especially from you know my generation, and maybe even Steve's in a little bit you know younger, just because you know we haven't as a as a generation sort of that's on Earth today, we haven't gone through, especially in North America, you know, all that many huge traumas and crises yeah, as, no. as kind of a nation. You know, I think World War II would have been the last really big one. You know, so we sort of just have this idea that you know we've become so enlightened you know, in our technology, in our modernness, that we just will never experience suffering again. And that's, that is just not biblical. Yeah. You know, God talks a lot about suffering in the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, Paul talks about it. Peter talks about it, you know. Yeah. And, you know, so ultimately the people that have gone before us have determined that God was good despite their circumstances. Right. Yeah. And often, often that, that character building that comes from it, um, because of their circumstances, right? Yeah, hugely. Um, I want to get to that because Jesus definitely faced disappointment while he was on earth. But before we get there, I want to ask you both, what happens if we don't deal with our disappointments well? Like what's at stake here for, I mean, I'm talking little things like, because I can fight that like, uh, oh man, I, I didn't expect to be in Orville. You know, I, I really did. That wasn't, I've never been a big expectations guy, Mm -hmm. like I'm going to be here in 10 years or I'm going to be here in 15 years or this is what my life is going to look like. But if I, even if I had been, I wouldn't have drawn up Orville in the plans, right? Well, no, me neither would I. And uh, and most of the time I'm like, man, I I love this place. I'm so glad to be here. But there's days where it's like, man, I didn't draw this up. So so if living in Orville is your greatest disappointment, man, you have had one blessed (laughs) life. That's true. Be honest with you, because Orville is a phenomenal place to live. Yeah. And we just, it's our misconceptions that make us think it's bad Mm. when we're coming here. Yeah. But living here, all of a sudden you realize, that's pretty good. I, I, I tend to pinch myself, wonder... I do tend to be in a good mood most of my most most minutes of the day, mm-hmm. and I, and people ask me all the time, "How are you doing?" And I'm genuinely answering, you know, I'm doing awesome because I just walk around happy, and I don't really know how that ever occurred because it's not the nature, it's yeah. not the nature. How I solve problems is not with joy, <laughs> not by telling you how wonderful life is. Oh, just smile and get through it. I mean, that's not usually my counsel. Yeah, and yet I walk around smiling and get through and everything. I think that, you know, the outcome of not 
having this attitude is that we end up bitter. We end up crying a lot of tears. We just, the, 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 you lose your child, you're going to have the majority of your time is going to be miserable. You lose your husband and a good portion of your time is going to be miserable for a long season. Mm -hmm. You and me, we don't have any reason to have that many you know, mine's a granddaughter, so my time being miserable, what's okay and acceptable for me, is quite a bit shorter than my daughter's and quite yeah. a bit less than Stephanie's. Yeah. And, I mean, you just it's almost quantified by almost measured out that I think that if, if you don't go through your disappointments with an expectation that God is good and an understanding that you're living His will, He's Lord, then your day-to-day -day life that comes out of it when my daughter finally she'll never forget it'll never be okay i'm not right. saying that but she will tend to get on with life mm -hmm. stephanie gets on with life at a way more of a percentage than than the people who lost her kid mm -hmm. but she still has her dark moments and then you know each each crisis we have a shorter period but if we didn't deal with it by accepting his lordship looking at his will looking at his goodness and just not deciding not us making him good but just remembering that he's good and and going ahead and accepting the truth that mm -hmm. he is good and that he has a plan for us and in the end all things are going to work out for good for those who love him we will not get there if we never if we never learn to face our disappointments in this manner to where we begin to look at the truth of who he is that he gets to be Lord, and this is my life. And even though these bad things happened, my life is going to be good. Yeah. My life is good. And all of a sudden, wonder. Well, I wonder why I have so much joy. I'm supposed to be miserable. My husband died. I'm supposed to be miserable. My granddaughter died. Mm -hmm. I'm, is it okay? Is it suitable? Is it okay for me to not be mourning anymore? And we ask ourselves these questions based on whatever tragedy we've faced. Yeah. My house burned down. Am I supposed to be on the news telling them I'm excited about the future? Not according to the news. Not according to the news, <laughs> right. So when you face it with goodness, you're mourning, you know, I, 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 you know, in private, I still to this day wonder how my house burnt down mm -hmm. and have to ever and remind myself, well, it was his house. Mm -hmm. And what am I, what am I even, why do I consider that to even be a negative? It turned out so good. Yeah. And so, you know, in each aspect of our life, when he causes all things to come together for the good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose, when we finally see the outcome and we look back on it, then how come the very next tragedy we don't then do it better? Yeah, we got you know, the goldfish brains. We have, but what we have is a society telling us <laughs> that's not the way you look at it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I think that for me, you know, I, I, I live according to the promise that he'll give you joy for mourning. Yeah. You know, in my situation. Right. You know, I, I count on that every single day. Um, but I think, you know, the outcome of, of disappointment that is not dealt with, um, you know, can come all the way to the loss of salvation, you mm -hmm. know. And I know that's kind of, we won't get into the idea of loss of salvation exactly, but, you know, this idea that, you know, our hearts start to become hard, and Steve alluded to that with the idea of bitterness, but we start to get into this idea that we have to protect ourselves from God, you know, who is meant to be our source, you know, he is love, and if he's love, then we have to have that, you know, we have to have that to live and breathe and be alive, you know, in him, and it, you know, it talks in, in First Peter, you know, it, about trials, you know, and so that's something that I hang on to a lot, you know, and it says that the proof of your faith, which is more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though it's tested, will result in the praise, glory, and honor of the revelation of Jesus himself, you know, mm -hmm. so our trials actually cause the revelation of Jesus, or, you know, then it, it can go the opposite, which is then that we actually fall away from Jesus, because, you know, the end of those verses is basically, you know, that because the faith is so important that is now being uh, created through our trials, through our disappointments. You know, the outcome of that faith is the salvation of your souls is what Peter says. Mm. You know, so if, if trials produce faith, then we're, we're gaining salvation. On the other hand, you know, if trials produce uh, not faith, yeah, you know, then we're actually, yeah. you know, we become in danger of walking away 
from salvation. Yeah. And that's that's a really big thing. So, you know, just burying them and pretending that they're not there really doesn't help because mm-hmm. it then separates us from him. You know, the only thing as Christians that we can do and really should do is expose, you know, like I said earlier, expose our pain to him and allow him to walk us through the process of being healed so that we actually have the revelation of who he is because it says that he's a comforter says that he'll give us joy for mourning you know he promises to carry the things that we can't carry you know and i i that is what what i get out of bed with every day that is why i get out of bed is because he is with me you know and it would be so easy to fall into self-pity you know why me why is this happening you know and obviously there's there's moments of those but they have to be small Mm -hmm. you know i have to choose his goodness i have to yeah you know, I was I was talking last week's podcast. I think it was about the uh, the guys I met on the mountain bike trail, and they uh, they told me um, I, they asked me what I did, and I said I I volunteer at the Father's House Church, and uh, they started telling me all about the Father's House Church and all the cool things that happen here, and I didn't get a word in about that, but actually your name came up first. Hmm. Because um, because one of the guy's wife was in a mom's group that you're a part of helping put on, mm-hmm. and um, and they're just like, man, I couldn't imagine having the joy and and the peace that that Steph shows my wife after losing a husband, and uh, and that's like that's not just producing faith for yourself, but that's helping show faith and produce faith in other people so much so that your granddaughter's journey and your daughter's faithfulness and your son-in-law's faithfulness produce faith in so many other people as they just watched it on Facebook. And and, they've been a spectacle for that reason. Yeah. Just like you're mentioning Steph here. And uh, she's been a spectacle for that reason. And to the point that I can meet random guys on a mountain bike trail and they, they tell me about Mm -hmm. the people who live on my block and it's just so, it's really cool. That's so interesting because when George was diagnosed, that person that you're talking about, one of the first things I said was, I want that person's wife to meet you through this. Wow. So we'll no see way. what happens. We'll see what yeah. happens. That's we'll really cool. Happens. Yeah. So, so one of the biggest problems we face is the Christian community decides that if Stephanie's children aren't miserable, they, they didn't love their dad. Hmm. Or if Stephanie isn't walking around with the black scarf over her head dressed in mourning clothes and it isn't for a suitable time like like if she doesn't hide out for a year then she must not have loved her husband and loved being marriage the other day uh being as we're in our 60s you know at our 60s um dinner what's that called greatest decades greatest decades Mm -hmm. Which I miss. Great, greatest decades. Cell, cell, it's not called this yeah. life group, cell group, whatever we, what we Greatest call decades dinner. I don't know. Anyway, de- yeah. A bunch like, of friends <laughs> hanging out. All right, it's so they're really all sitting fun. at this table, and they st- they're all single. Some of them are widows, and some of them are just, you know, long-term single, been divorced a long time. And they start, they're talking about marriage. And then all of a sudden, they turned to Vicky and said, you know, they're talking about marrying someone younger or older. And the subject got to, if one of you died, you know, would you remarry? For you guys? Yeah, me and Vicky. And yeah. I'm, we're like, I'm like, you know... <laughs> My my thing is, I I want to tell you the truth. I'd start looking for a wife, and the the bad thing is, I'd probably start looking for a wife within two three weeks. And and they're all laughing. They, That's they about are laughing. The laundry rate, right? Yeah, they when, are laughing you... their their heads off. But because it's so odd, and I think I know you're judging me for this, but here's the let me tell you the truth. I am marriage for me is the most fulfilling thing I've ever lived in my human existence with another human being Mm -hmm. why would i want to waste whatever days i have left not being married it it, you're the what's going through your mind (laughs) what what's going through your mind is that i if i did that then i i'm glad vicky's dead or something and that just couldn't be further from the truth you said if so you know and so Mm -hmm. Then they asked, you know, would you marry someone? <laughs> what, what if you died? Would you want Vicky to get married? I said, yes, marriage was the best thing that ever happened to her. And I can't wait for her. I'm hoping two things. I hope she gets married right away because she's going to then find out how good I was. Because <laughs> she's going to have a hard time replacing me. That was funny. That's true. But then I said, they said, well, you don't want her to marry a younger man. I go, no, I want her to marry the youngest man possible. I want, I want her to have to raise up some 20-year-old. No, I'm, I was kidding. Though. Yeah. 
<laughs> but people have turning. so many preconceived <laughs> ideas. Somewhere Vicky's feeling a little bit a little bit upset right now. <laughs> this is, this no, is what she, happens when Vicky She was come. there. She yeah. was there at the dinner. She we were laughing. She misses one because episode. It's funny. Steve's already I say that to her all our time, you know. She says she has a rule that I can't marry someone that's not a certain age and I I have a rule that I want her to marry someone young. So yeah. she's she's I'm, anyways, it's yeah. more of a she joke. She have to go through it twice. Yeah. How about yeah, that? Yeah, I want you to have to deal with some young guy. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to believe how much age you know how, how good getting old is you know we mm-hmm. complain about it but I think that that's the preconceived ideas of all these things allow us these jokes and allow us these ideas that if if you're not miserable then you didn't really value what you lost and it's not true mm-hmm. not even close it's I not only value it I'm so grateful for having had it mm-hmm. and there's so many magical things about it that I, I don't want to spend the rest of my life mourning its loss. I want to spend the rest of my life celebrating what I had, mm-hmm. yep. that I got to have it. Yep. And I think that this name it, claim it kind of mentality that Christianity is all about God's blessing and his blessing is only defined one way is it's, it's, it leads us into an inability to enjoy life with good and bad in it. We can only enjoy life if only good's in it. Mm. And I think that robs us of the ability to enjoy a life that has uh, rainy days and has has pitfalls and yeah. unexpected, you know, misery. Because it is miserable. There's nothing fun about what they went with. Her and my daughter went through in this yeah. life, mm-hmm. for and or going through, mm-hmm. but how will you come out of it? How will, how will you present it to the world? You know, Job's friends presented it that God is this way and it made God mad. I hope that's not still true about him because we need to present him for who he is and who he is is he's good. Even when bad things are happening in my life, my neighbor has free will to shoot at me and that's not God's fault. Mm -hmm. He has free will to be evil. If he wants to be, my neighbor has free will to do bad things and um, it's going to affect me. But does that mean God's not good? Does that mean God didn't plan good for me? I think it, I think it doesn't have anything to do with it. I think he's right. good. Mm-hmm. And I have to learn how to love him, serve him, and trust him, regardless of what happens in my life. Yeah. You know, it's the biggest thing that's striking me about this conversation. If I think about uh, who I was and where I was before I started coming to the Father's house, I don't think I would have ever dreamed that I'd be talking to to people have been that talking plainly to people who have been through, especially what you've been through Steph Mm -hmm. and, and still be able to, to joke and still be able to like, see the smile on your face and everything. Um, I think there's a lot of people in Christianity that feel really alone with their disappointments because they, I mean, honestly, I never knew how to talk to people about their disappointments. Yeah. Until I came here. Made because, it real uncomfortable. Because, I mean, and I don't feel uncomfortable right now because no. you're a good friend and you're a good friend. And, I, you know, like I know this isn't – I know I'm not pulling teeth to get you guys to talk. This is your your joy to, yeah. to share with people, and it's something that's really going to lift up people who listen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think I understand that's because you understand both of you guys, you're put on this earth to tell people about Jesus. That's right. And – you like this is what is going to be something that's going to turn people towards Jesus or help people to be closer to him. Right. But I, I still think there's so many people out there that just, it's either something they struggle with alone or, I mean, it's something that they're, they're surrounded by people that are acquaintances, but not really, mm-hmm. you know, close enough to talk to. Right. Yeah. The aloneness is that, that is the enemy's biggest trap you know, for any of us that experience disappointment is this idea that, you know, no one understands, nobody understands, nobody but me. So no one can possibly, you know, reach in. I can't ever, I I can't open up about how I feel because no one's going to understand anyway, or no one cares or, you know, this, any, any time that he can isolate us, you know, from the love of people or the love of God. But, you know, I have found that every time I choose the opposite of that, because, you know, that, that trap is laying waiting for me every day. Yeah. (laughs) You know, every time I choose to open myself up and just, you know, be vulnerable and allow people to see that intimate place inside of me, you know, or, or even the idea of, you know, nobody understands. So, you know, I have to be alone in it, you know, but it doesn't take long for the Holy Spirit to remind me, you know, whether people understand or not, he put people in my life that love me. 
you know, and if I don't ever allow that in, you know, I will always be alone and I will always be alone with my disappointment. And that is, that is a slippery slope to despair, you know? And so yeah. we have to, we have to be really careful with that trap of I'm alone. Nobody understands, you know, when it comes to disappointment, the best thing you can do, you know, is actually let people in, even if, you know, even if it feels like nobody's going to understand, you know, it's an opportunity for relationship. It's an opportunity for us to see each other intimately, you know, and if, if we're a body, you know, Paul talks about that, you know, if we're a body, then we have to bear these things together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I highly recommend support groups of people who do understand you. Mm. I know, um, you know, a young widow with children, that's going to be a rare support group. You may have to drive a few miles because yeah. not that many young men die yeah. prematurely leaving behind young wives and young children. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people who've had babies or children, their own children die. You know, I, I had dinner Sunday, pastor's appreciation, a church bought pastor's dinner and we were there and it was interesting. A lady that I knew 25 years ago leading a, support group for parents who've lost children um she walked into the dinner and immediately my daughter and her were like best friends and i was wondering have you been have i it was clear they've been talking yeah and i gotta tell you there's nobody can help my daughter more than somebody else and they they cross rooms they 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 run to each other I was at my house uh, for the greatest decades, mm -hmm. sitting there talking to a lady. I had no idea she'd lost a child, but it was interesting. My daughter and her were fast friends. Mm -hmm. And over the course of conversation, she says, I lost my son 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, oh, no wonder they just drawn to each other. Yeah. And I highly recommend that. I just they, they, they can become friends and they can help each other. But what Stephanie's saying is so important that there has to, since – not everybody fits that category. I think you have to have that and you have to have the attitude that Stephanie has where people who can't relate have to be also able to help you. Yeah. And so you got to have both, but I think you, you I definitely think mm -hmm. you got to have some people who can relate to you that can, you know, you can talk about it and say, yeah, you know, laying there alone at night, <laughs> there's this emptiness mm -hmm. that used yeah. to be filled. You know, there's this, t the marriage contract the marriage covenant is a sewing together of souls and death is a ripping so there's a torn there's a torn yeah. raw edge that nobody nobody who hasn't experienced it can possibly understand yeah. it and so obviously there's a pain of aloneness at night that i imagine talking to someone is, is, yeah oh i don't want to <laughs> but i do understand but yeah. i can't i can't relate yeah. and i think you know in all tragedy in christianity that's one of the things that people are afraid to mention. They've had bad days. Yeah. They're, they're afraid to mention the hardships in their life because, because one of two things, either, you know, it's a cry on your shoulder type of thing, or it's, or it's, uh, something's wrong with you because bad things are happening to you. And we're supposed to be about bless me club. We're supposed to, God only does good things and he does all these good things. Why not for you? Something must be wrong with you. So we're afraid, but I think that if we could start sharing it in our groups and just, and not, not the total focus. It can't be the point of every meeting or every relationship, but it has to be part of it. It's got to be part of yeah. every community that bad things happen to us. I think the best thing everyone says to me is what they, they, they so appreciate the why I walk through tragedy. You know, I just happened the other day, another house burnt down over here on Greenville. And I was shocked at how many people came to me because I mean that didn't it wasn't a blip on my radar a house burning down yeah house uh, burning down with nobody in it it's like <laughs> yeah, it's being, no, being yeah, renovated it's all but. covered by insurance ain't no big deal it's just a little extra work and they're acting like I mean people are acting like this is the biggest tragedy oh my gosh oh yeah. my gosh and I'm just I'm standing well okay we got work to do as soon as they get this out, we got to get started. Yeah, you brought a lawn chair when it was halfway. Done. I had to have a lawn chair, but the lawn chair was because <laughs> of my his legs. My yes, legs. Okay. I couldn't. St I figured I'd be there all night. Enjoying. I thought I'd be standing there waiting <laughs> yeah. for the fireman the until morning, so I had yeah. to bring Pyro a chair because yeah. I can't stand that long. Because another tragedy in my life is my I've developed a neuropathy in my lower half, yeah. and mm -hmm. so I have to just deal with it. It's life, and it's a good life with yeah. with with ailments. Mm -hmm. With death, with uh, with betrayal, we have so many betrayals around us all the time. So many disappointments, and w that could cause us to quit looking at the victories. We got some incredible victories. Yeah, 
this young lady sitting next to me here, Stephanie, she's such an incredible victory mm-hmm. in, in the ministry of the Father's House and in her life and in her children's lives. I mean, just to watch her grow and watch her, her become the woman that God has created her to be. And I got to tell you something, even this tragedy here is causing her to become someone amazing. Mm-hmm. Would she have voted for it? No. But is she going to reject the benefits of it now that it's happened? That would be silly. Yeah. Right. I'm celebrating, honestly. Celebrate, yeah. Celebrate yeah. The, the the value, but it doesn't mean you're glad he's gone. It doesn't mean yeah. you're glad a tragedy happened or that your children are suffering. You're just glad that God is making something good out of absolute horrors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And trusting that he is. That yeah. he is. Because and he is. He's so clearly right there. You know, I have a greater revelation of him now than I have ever had in my life. It's you amazing. Know, through my pain and despite my pain. And I feel myself blossoming at the same time as I cry and I cry and I cry. And it feels like the pain will never end. You Amen. know, it's, it's just, it's all of it. And it's because I've allowed him in. Yeah. Well, I think a really good, a really good uh, example for the right way to deal with disappointment and huge disappointment is actually Jesus himself, mm. right? Because we, we sometimes, if, if we don't spend time reading what he, his life was actually like, you kind of, you kind of forget that his life, I mean, if you're going to draw up a, how to be in your actual life, how to be successful, you're not going to tick a lot of the boxes that he ticked. He was, you know, rejected by the people that, that he came to save. Uh, even his like closest friends, struggled to believe and have faith and, and, they, and fled. they betrayed him you know mm-hmm. and uh and the whole point of his life was to die on a cross right and like th- that was the pinnacle of his life mm-hmm. and of course he was resurrected but even he asked you know he had in the garden of gethsemane asking asking his father like isn't there another way yeah but then the point was if i mean if there's not then your will. your will be done, right? Mm-hmm. And that goes right back to lordship. Right. right? Yeah, it's a mission, really. I think his biggest disappointment was when he would say, how long must I put up with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. my greatest fear. I don't want to hear those words. Yeah. I'm hoping if he's saying that, then those are those days when I can't hear his voice because that, <laughs> that would be horrible to have Jesus say, how long do I have to put up with you, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> I, I am hoping forever. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm hoping forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can I, can I bring the idea of submission up? Absolutely. You yeah. Know, submission and surrender. You know, I, I don't think we tend to think of that as a, you know, part of disappointment. But, you know, for Jesus, obviously, he was 100% submitted and he was 100% uh, surrendered to his father you know Mm. first of all you know knowing that he was going to you know the jews and that that process was going to be painful you know but he was submitted and surrendered to the will of the father for one thing you know and then you know in my own journey you know when i am willing to submit and surrender you know not my will but your will be done you know uh god god told me you know or the holy spirit told me you know after george died that was the greatest prayer i prayed you know, while George was sick, was not my will, but mm. your will be done. Didn't ma- all the healing prayers, all the, you know, help me, help me, heal him, do what I want. Um, you know, the the greatest prayer was not my will, yeah. your will. In Jordy's words, and Jesus, do whatever. Yeah, George. Yeah, that was exactly. George always said, do Just whatever. Do whatever. You know, and you know, if we can continue that process, and you know, I I brought it up with a really big situation, but I do it on a you know, almost probably daily basis, I'm sure you do too, you know, in some form saying, okay, you know, this isn't my thing. This is your thing. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't my life. This is your life. These aren't my kids. These are your kids. This isn't my car, my house, my stuff, my money, you know, and it's just, if, if we continue in that posture of, you know, this is my life is not my own. Paul, that's what Paul said, right? My life is not my own. Mm -hmm. And, and if that's our, our attitude, we are gonna always, you know, find the Lordship. We're going to find out who he is and we're going to yeah. be better for it. Yeah. Um, even it, when it comes down to disappointments, right? He, he told us what to expect. It's not if the storm comes, it's when, when the storm comes, is your house going to be built on the rock? And um, he said, this world is going to be troubled. What did I say wrong? You're, Nothing. No. Okay. In the world, you'll have tribulation. Yeah, you'll have you'll have difficulties, and so heart. but be of good cheer, <laughs> because he's overcome. The he's world. overcome the world. That's right, and that's our short sightedness that we yeah. 
really see if I'm going to live 20 years from now, I would be fairly old. If I'm going to live 25, I'm getting real old. And uh, so I only have, you know, I certainly am older than 25, so I'm past halfway. Mm -hmm. And we tend to think of that as this horridly long time that, you know, if, if it's bad, it's so bad. But then add that to eternity. You know, eternity mm -hmm. goes on forever. I love Francis Chan's rope, you know, that starts outside the building, goes all through his in and out, you know. And yeah. this, this thing has no end. And your life is this knot to this knot. And, mm. and uh, look how short that is. And you're complaining about the events occurring in, a knot, in, in the size this big yeah. when you're going to live on forever. So the eternal perspective of these situations mm. is what we lack and what keeps us worrying about things like the legacy we're going to leave. I mean, mm. what? You know, in the long run, we're going to spend eternity with our legacy. Those we influence to find Jesus, those we lead to him, those we don't cause to turn away. We don't inflict on them hypocrisy and cause mm -hmm. them to turn away. And that, that's your legacy. That's, that's what your life should be about. And I think people seeing you go through hardship and saying, man, I can't believe your faith. Your faith is inspiring me. That's a good deal. That's an eternal yeah. perspective right there. We want to, we want to inspire you to eternal life mm -hmm. and if we had to you know be alone for 20 years be t you know or hurt for 20 years I just you know adding that all up do i want to hurt no do i want to be whipped no crucified pick up your cross and follow me oh no lord no but you know in comparison to an eternal life I, i'm just i just think we look at it wrong and i think yeah. we look at it wrong because our world has taught us to make it all about us and to look at things that we want to happen as what really matters mm -hmm. instead of submitting and surrendering mm -hmm. to what he wants to happen. Lord, here's what I'd like, just like Jesus, here's what I'd like, but Lord, your will, not mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great place to stop. Um, it's been so good to have you, Steph. Yep. It's really <laughs> good. I it's, like I like to talk. That was uh, <laughs> you're good today. That was good. It's gonna be uh, good to hear for our Canadian because we got a ton of Canadian listeners. So it's gonna. That's be right. Good. They'll have to tell me if I have any accent left at all. Do you have any anybody you want to shout out in Canada? Oh, you sound hopelessly yeah. American. <laughs> sorry, sorry about sorry. that one. Okay. I'm so sorry. You're yeah. Sorry. Yeah, get that, get that in well, yeah. Shout out to all my family. So I'm going to definitely be sending them this podcast. Okay. You just want to listen to your big sister talk a little more. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, Steve, we'll see you next week. And Steph, we'll see you around. Yeah. All righty. All right. See ya.